welcome to the Nerd Party. Scully? Yes? Marry me. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. I love that woman. I love her more than sharks love blood. I love you. You don't. Hello, I'm Tristan Riddell. And I'm the girl. And this is Nerd Nuptial episode 120. How are you doing today? I'm good. We actually just got done playing in the snow. That's right. <laughs> yes, for those of you who don't know if this is your first time listening, this is a show about a, mur- a married couple. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. A married couple um, <laughs> looking through life uh, through a nerdy lens yeah and thus nerd nuptial and uh we live in the midwest we live in the chicagoland area right and it just snowed a lot last night yeah and we've been trying to get our daughter ripley to like the snow she will be two actually in a few days Mm -hmm. and like two weeks or something like that and um she has not had the best experience in the snow but we're warming her up to it for example, you just dumped her out of the, her sled. Accidentally. And so... <laughs> she made a face was, plant right yeah, in the snow. Yeah, she was not happy. Um, but she did enjoy shoveling the snow. So <laughs> maybe you should like hire her per her driveway. Yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So she's turning two. Yeah. And uh, we've been actually exposing her to... We're, you're not supposed to show her, like, like according no. to the literature... Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to show her a full movie until two. Well, we showed her a couple episodes. We told you guys that we showed her Toy Story 3, I think, a month ago. Yeah. So we're about six weeks ahead of schedule. <laughs> but we've been starting this Sunday... Afternoon movie. Afternoon movie. Yeah. And she's been super enjoying it. Yeah. And we have, too. And we just... We gave her uh, popcorn. We watch it with her. We watch it with her. And yeah. We we gave her popcorn for the first time yesterday. We did. We watched Frozen. And yeah, so we've we've shown her Toy Story three, Frozen, Lilo and Stitch, Lilo and Stitch, and I think that's it. I, yeah, that's and it. On her birthday, we're going to show her Toy Story one. That's, that's going right. to be the big deal. Yes, because that's a and that's an important movie to me. That's a special. It's movie a very to me. special movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but today we're not just talking about that. No, we are doing something. This one is kind of like a, it's not it's not a missing frames. Although we, I feel like we could <laughs> frame it as one. It's more of a, uh, a revisiting, like a mm-hmm. revisiting Black Mirror. So like if you saw the title and you saw the artwork, you know what we're talking about. Right. Revisiting Black Mirror. We weren't the best Black Mirror fan. Like, like it's well, we been weren't out... Black Mirror fans. Well, we're not. Yeah, we're, straight up, <laughs> we're just straight up not. Um, it's been out for four seasons and there are only like a handful of episodes a season. Mm-hmm. And... Um, there's certain times, like on Letterbox, the app that I use to to count what we watch, they're counted as TV movies. Well, they're long, so some are long, some right. are short. Yeah. So I don't know which ones count and which ones don't. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what the regulations are. Like I don't know how it, how that happens. But we uh, we watched the first episode mm-hmm. a uh, long time ago. We watched half of the first episode. Yeah, and we just didn't get into it. It was a, yeah. the storyline was about a, a prime minister who was being coerced into publicly having sexual intercourse with a pig. So and that so did not sound like a nerd nuptial appropriate <laughs> no. subject. And so we're like, click. Yeah. New. No. Yeah. Like none of that. Like we were just like having none of it. But a lot of people have mentioned to us that we should try Black Mirror. Yes, a lot uh, of people. Because even you guys, actually, you, yeah, the listeners actually absolutely. Talked to us about it. So I mean, we like Twilight Zone esque things. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is kind of like the British modern digital age version of that. Very much so. Very it's, much so. It's even built kind of as that, right? Usually a moral tale. Yeah, usually. And uh, usually a twist at the end. Absolutely. And uh, always something weird and right. wonky going on. Well, I was just like I don't know, surfing Netflix and trying to figure out what to watch. And uh, like I watched the preview for Black Mirror and I'm like, why haven't we given this like a better shot? A real shot. Yeah. So... I was like, let's do that. Let's try it. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we watched Bandersnatch. Yeah, we did. And I don't know if we talked about that, but it was very unimpressive. Yeah. And it's supposed to be, that was supposed to be super impressive because it's it's a choose your own adventure. It was, I love the concept. The concept was great. It was like integrated into Netflix. Like you had two options 
and you could tell the character what yeah. to do, and it really just was disappointing. It was a yeah, real maybe letdown. we chose wrong. I don't know. <laughs> well, we we had a couple of different endings, and a, yeah. like we missed out some on some others. We haven't gone back and done it. Maybe we should go back. And we try probably it. should. Uh, and also, last year, well, now two years ago, in 2017, they released uh, one called the USS Callister, mm-hmm. which is a Star Trek spoof. And when it was released, like I'm a I'm a member of the Star Trek community on Twitter, right? And when that was released, it made huge waves uh, on the nerd community, and so. And I, you you watched it, but you weren't super into it. I wasn't into it, and I feel like I, it's because I was supposed to watch. I, w- I was supposed to like it. And I was in no mood to watch it. I don't know what mood I was in. I was just, I was just like, eh, I don't want to do this. This is weird. And I started skipping around a little bit, and I didn't have much time to get it done. And I just I just didn't really like it. But I totally, looking back on it now, I totally didn't didn't give it the right amount of attention and the right framework of a frame of mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you actually texted me while I was at work and said like, Hey, let's. Uh, let's give let's give this another shot yeah and uh and so i was like okay well let's just watch like the top 10 right so we found like what did we do we looked on um imdb yes it was imdb because if you look that's it's so hard to find a good top 10 list because we didn't want just some random dude's opinion about like what their favorite was like here's you know yeah. like entertainment weekly's top 10 right. i don't care i don't right. care what your personal and we had heard is. that there are some in there that just are not really worth your time mm-hmm. so you know even though there's not that many of them um if you actually look at the seasons you know some of them are better than others and we wanted to find out what those were and so with imdb the beautiful thing about that is that it's kind of like rotten tomatoes where it can aggregate a, a cumulative score of mm-hmm. many different viewers opinions and ratings and they and so they make a top 10 list that way and i was like okay right. well, i think that's safer than just some randos list right so that way it's like everybody's opinion right and so we went off of that and i'm glad that we did because we've been really enjoying it so far we have yeah i think like you know it's funny um what kind of got me in the mood for it was we watched the lobster <laughs> um with rachel vice and uh colin, colin Farrell. Farrell, and it's so weird and kind of dystopian and like future future society very off kilter yeah Yeah. that i was like i was in that mood like let's kind of do this type of type of show since i knew that's what it would be Mm -hmm. um and so yeah we've watched like i don't know maybe eight of them so far i think so maybe yeah eight eight no maybe seven seven maybe seven Seven, because we skipped actually we skipped number 10 Oh, on the list for the IMDb? Yes, the number 10 <laughs> on the list for IMDb of Black Mirror was 15 Million Merits, which actually had the, or has, the youngest daughter from Downton Abbey in it. And when I saw the thumbnail, I was like, oh, cool. You know, like, I know her. Not personally. And <laughs> But when I saw the description, it said a woman is faced, or like, a woman is on a uh what what's the word i'm looking for a game, game show. show a woman is on a game show and she's forced to do degraded acts and i was just like no yeah why, it doesn't why sound like something you want to watch yeah why would i want to watch a woman go through that right exactly and so we skip that one maybe it's i don't know maybe it's okay maybe, maybe we'll do a little more research to see if we could handle it yeah maybe it's not as bad as i thought so mm-hmm. we we skipped that one and went to nine right <laughs> and it was going down the list from there and it's uh it's been a very positive experience yeah, we've had a lot of fun. Like, I've l- looked forward to watching them. So um, it's been, I don't know, it's just been fun. And it's kind of been so many weird ideas, but also a lot of, like, possible ideas yeah. of, like, future technology that could happen or we're even kind of close to having that it's just been interesting even. I kind of feel like we, we kind of see them in two categories. We have, like, really good stories. Mm-hmm. And then we have, like episodes that deal with the future technology and how yeah and how like people will react to them yeah so that's kind of how we see them at least that yeah i think i I agree with that one where it's uh there there's some that have some really great concept Mm -hmm. uh, concepts and just really get you thinking oh yeah but the story is kind of stretched or it's just kind of right to explain the technology they can't really get too in depth with the story and then there's other ones where the concept is very uh streamlined Mm -hmm. very simple very straightforward and the story is king right exactly and moves along pretty well yeah i uh 
And so, it, like, we we haven't finished the top ten yet. No, but we couldn't help but talk about it. Yeah, just because it was so. It's been so much fun. We, like, we'll probably finish. We'll, we'll tonight. De- tonight, we'll finish the, <laughs> the top two tonight. But right. we had to. We had to record. We mm-hmm. wanted to get this done so that you guys could listen and we could deliver an episode yeah. on time. And if you guys um, are Black Mirror fans and we don't talk about an episode. That you're like, no, 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 you need to watch this episode or it's your favorite. Yeah. We would love to hear from you because we're on this kick. So we would love to watch more. And we're going to use the episode names. Like, yes. We'll, we'll, you'll probably hear us say like, oh, the one with the social media or the one with the bees or right. something like that. <laughs> but we'll use the name so that you know which ones we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And if we don't mention it and you guys think that we'll like it, just like the girl said, right. go ahead and let us know. Please. Contact us. What you can do is you can go to the nerdparty.com slash contact Select Nerd Nuptial from the drop-down menu. Fill out the form. It'll send us an email. You can also find us on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You can find me personally on Twitter at the Insane Robin. Uh, but yeah, every, anything you need to know about the show or our backlog of episodes or other shows that are on the network, all you got to do is go to the nerdparty.com. Yeah. Okay. So first one that we watched was Nosedive. And this is the one with Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. I feel like it's the one that, at least as a non black mirror fan that's what i thought about when it's, i saw black mirror because i yeah. feel like they use her a lot in the advertising of the show that is exactly <laughs> what i was going to say that is 100 percent what i was going to say like right. they, they're like oh bryce dallas howard we're going to use her face exactly. in as much of the marketing materials as we right can. right like, she's pretty <laughs> she's she's pretty she's well known right and uh yeah it's like her her face is all over the thumbnails and the mm-hmm. commercials and everything like that exactly yeah um so this one i mean I don't want to give too much away. We're going to try to be yeah. as spoiler-free as possible. We're no, I guess the thing that we're, we're going to talk about the concept, but maybe not the spoilers. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about the concepts, but we won't talk about the Because a lot of that you can get from the thumbnail on oh Netflix my gosh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. um, And, you know, the, like the episode descriptions. So this one was about how, like, everyday interactions you give people stars. So, like, five stars. So, like... You like the way they served you coffee, five stars. You like the way that they talk to you in the elevator, five stars. Or they or r- they step don't. on your toe and they give you two. You give, you give them you one, get two stars, two stars, or right? Like that. And so everyone's based on this star system, and basically you have certain privileges based on how many stars you have. So you may not be able to get into a building if you're too low with your stars. You could lose your job. Yeah, yeah because yeah. you can't enter the building or. And people like you could do one bad thing or, you know, you mess up and then, you know, you're down some stars. So it's a complete caste system. Mm -hmm. It's it's social stratification where it's like if you're if you're hip or if you're popular, you can do so many things. You can like you can enter into places you can that you couldn't otherwise like there's a bare minimum just like you talked about like there's some where there's a bare minimum like oh 2.5 and there's other ones where it's exclusive like oh no you got to be a 4.2 right. or above and right. like the really swanky country clubs exactly. things like that or yeah. like oh if you rent here and you're a 4.8 you can get 20% off the rent, like that kind of thing. Like if you're an influencer. Right. You know, right. like. Which yeah. is not, I mean, you know, we see some of that in our in our world today, right? Mm-hmm. And they kind of look like the phones that they were using. And at least like the interface looked a lot like the Instagram. Oh, right? it was hardcore. It was very in- much like Instagram. Instagram. Like, you know, she's posting a picture of her coffee. She's got to think about like the most creative title. So that it'll get more likes. And she took one singular bite out of the cookie right. and then put it next framing to the it. coffee and yeah, framing it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think that that one is definitely more, for us, we found it more of like a concept type story that we weren't really crazy about the story. No. But it was an interesting, kind of terrifying concept. It was terrifying. Because that could happen. <laughs> It 100% could happen. And that's yeah. what's so terrifying. Right. Be- a lot of these things. I think that's the shtick yeah. of Black Mirror is that they really ground, as crazy as they get, mm-hmm. as crazy as they get and off the wall and just absurd, there's a bit of it that is grounded in reality where you're just like, oh, no. Right. Like, oh, wait, I do that. Or, yeah. oh, wait, no. Like I yeah. could see that happening. Right. That kind of thing, exactly. Given enough timeline. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like an extreme future, but it's not out of the distant future. And I think yeah. this <laughs> one was, this particular episode was the most relatable 
in terms of social media. There's another episode that we're going to be talking about that ba- it just it, it didn't even happen in the near future. It happened. It could happen today. Yeah. At any yeah, time. Right. But with this one, it was so casual in its stratification and its snobbery. It's linked. a cautionary tale. It's a, yes. You know, it's like we are, you know, some of us more than others are very, you know, find our self-worth in how many likes you get, like, mm-hmm. you know, and how many times you've been retweeted and everything like that. And it's one of those things where like, wait a minute, like, and also just the fakeness of people mm-hmm. as well comes through. And that's like a huge plot point is like, everyone's like smiling and everyone's even, super nice to each right, other. Right. Even if you're frustrated, you have to like keep a smile on your face so that you don't lose stars and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just, it was fascinating because, you know, if you have any social media, I think you have a, a degree of that, right? Where you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I hope someone likes my picture. Oh my gosh, yeah. Right? No, there's, oh, oh that happens all the Otherwise, time. Otherwise, like, you don't have social media. Yeah, like <laughs> on, on Instagram, like I have, I have a private account and so do you. Mm-hmm. We have a finite amount of people that right. we allow to follow us. And so that one, it's not that big of a deal because on Instagram, I know that what people are going to like what I, and I, I don't mean that literally. I mean like as in like like it as in appreciate it. I know pe- right. people are going to appreciate what I post because that's why they follow me. And I only let people follow me that I know and like who are close to us. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little bit looser than you. Yeah. Um. But I I'm not. I'm. It's not open. Even if you request it, and I and I know you on Twitter. Or I know of you, or I recognize your name. It doesn't mean I'm going to let you because I post pictures of my kid. I, right. I, right. And I don't post pictures of my kid on Twitter. Right. And on Twitter, every once in a while, I'll catch myself deleting stuff where I'm just like, oh, this might cause controversy or Mm. this was stupid or this was a little overly personal. And so I try to tailor that a little bit more on Twitter. Like on Instagram, I'll post whatever I want because it's my personal space. Right. on Twitter, I'm a little bit more polished, a little bit more like... Looking for the likes? I yeah like if I if I post something that I know is not going to get likes likes or doesn't get like get likes within like the first hour or something like that I'll delete it really I will okay because I'm just like oh that must have been stupid and I didn't know it okay and so then I'll get rid of it interesting and uh and with and there's certain and there's I will be 100% honest here yeah I'm 100% honest. no I appreciate there, it there's certain times when like if I'll post a like I posted a video uh-huh of of uh what did i oh it was i did a, a, a best of 2018 yeah mo- a video uh, like the best films that we watched in 2018 i put a compilation together and i posted it on twitter and i really wanted people to like it because i, I wanted that positive reinforcement yeah and because i made it and i put a lot of work into it i really liked it and so i wanted other people to watch it and like it too and it's funny because i uh, last year i made a star trek video like that and it got it got thousands of views you know tons and tons of retweets and likes and people loved it because that's that affirmation that's my clear yeah that's my community online is the star trek community i post just films nothing about star trek and like you know it got some attention people liked it and i was just kind of like oh it didn't do as well as last year's video because it wasn't star trek because it wasn't star trek but i like sorry long story short like Every I check every once in a while if I if I see a retweet from somebody I don't know I check their follower count and I'm like oh they only have fifty followers <laughs> it's like thank you very much for retweeting it I okay. I didn't say anything of course this is all in my head this is yeah, all in yeah, my yeah, head yeah. I'm just like oh well I pre- I glad that they liked it I just wish that they had more followers so that more people could see it right and then I catch myself like oh my god are, are, what a snob just be appreciative that people are liking it right, and retweeting it right but there's that little bit of you where just like oh why can't like somebody who has like a hundred thousand followers you know <laughs> retweet it or something like that sure and more uh, attention yeah you get you want that attention mm-hmm. and a friend of mine and co-host on the network John Mills he has a lot of opinions about these things and he loved this episode he loved it because this is what he talks about all the time privately. Well, not all the time, but like he has a lot of strong opinions about it, about how social media is all about attention. Yeah. That's why it was built. And if you say that you're on social media and you don't care about the attention, you're 100% lying because otherwise you wouldn't use it. Right. You, right. Would, you would set it on private and have zero followers. Right. And that would and that would be it. Yeah. It would be like an, a private online diary. Right. Right. 
Yeah. And you you are on social media for the attention. Mm-hmm. Whether it's interaction or likes or retweets. Like, even if it's just interaction. Right. You're getting attention from well, like, someone. I only have, like, 80 followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I keep it very, like, I know all the people. Or I have some type of link with all the people um, in some way, shape, or form. And usually, like, in person. Mm-hmm. And I really am just, I mean, nowadays, I just... It's just pictures of Ripley Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just like our days and stuff like that. And honestly, like I'm just sharing it with like all I'm thinking about is like, oh, like the grandparents will like this. So I'm going to post it. Like my friend in Texas are (laughs) going to like this. Right, right, right. Exactly. So like real people are going to want to see her. So I'm posting it. Um, So I don't really have that as much, but I definitely understand like where you're coming from of and like seeing this was very interesting because you know and back in the facebook we i don't have facebook now and nor do you but there was that as well like how many followers do you have and that was like a big deal in the facebook days like when it first got started was like basically anyone i met i was like i immediately became like facebook friends with i did okay i did that where i was just like if i met you i was totally a part of that culture where it was just like, oh, well, if uh, if I shake hands with you and you're a cool person, I'll find you on Facebook. Right. Um, totally a part of that. Like, we were on Facebook in, like, the mid-2000s. Right. It was just colleges. It was just colleges at the time. But I never got into the whole number thing or likes thing. Okay. Like, I, I it just – I didn't – my brain wasn't wired that way yet. Interesting. Okay. I, I specifically remember not caring or even understanding hmm. the purpose of having that many friends on Facebook or that many likes or something like okay. that. I was like, well, what does it matter? Now I get it. Interesting. But I'm not on Facebook. But Letterboxd, I've really got into the Letterboxd over the past year. Okay. Like I've been using it since 2017, but 2018 I was using it every single day that we watched a movie. And I write a mini review for uh, everything we watch. Right. Whether it's just a sentence or a couple of paragraphs or a full-blown review, I'll write it on Letterboxd. And, but the thing is, though, is that, like, I barely get any likes, if at all. Uh-huh. Like, my average like is zero on Letterboxd. So it's really for you. So it's really for me. And I appreciate it. I love it. I even paid for a subscription this year just to support the company. But there's that little voice inside of me where it's just like, nobody likes it. <laughs> Do you think just, it's the Twitter like environment that does that to you? Or is it like yeah. because, because you wrote it, like someone should see it? Yeah. I, okay. it's, it's both. It's both. So like the idea, I, I feel like we've kind of moved away. Maybe I'm wrong. Like tell me if I'm wrong. But we've kind of moved away from people just having diaries where they only read them, right? It's almost like this idea that like if – I'm going to write about something. I'm going to share it with the world because well, I see that a lot. Well, that's – I think that's start. I think that's the entire reason we oh, – just dropped my mic. I think that's <laughs> the entire reason um, why we had blogs. Right. Like I was thinking, what were some of the blog names back in the day? But yeah, like when – Zanga, right, Live right, Journal. Right, right, Live Journal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Even MySpace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you could write whatever. For, yeah, those were the beginning and days like of even that. before that, mm-hmm. like you, if you you could set up your own website or just set That's like, oh, true. I'm going to blog about my travel experience, and people are like, oh, who cares, right? And now. Now that's, that's what all you we do. do. That's right? all we do. And so it's just an online journal. Like that was an idea. It's just like, and no matter how old this system was, you could always like or comment. It's true. It's and true. And if you didn't get as many likes as the last post. You you were kind of like what I do wrong exactly, yeah that that affirmation I through hate likes that. Yeah. I hate it because yeah. I I should just be happy mm-hmm. with my own experience with Letterboxd, but at the same time you're writing it down you're just like who am I doing this for am I doing it for me or am I doing it because I want other people to see it right. but then what does it matter if other people see it why are we doing a podcast when we could just <laughs> talk to each other. <laughs> That's true. It becomes a lot of different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah it really absolutely. does. Yeah. We should probably move on. We probably should. We've talked a lot about wow, that one. Wow, this is the first episode. <laughs> okay, so... I promise the, they won't all be like me. Yeah. The next one, like episode eight, because remember, we skipped episode 10. Mm-hmm. Episode eight in descending order was USS Callister. Yeah, and uh, we actually 
So this one you had watched before. That, we mentioned this briefly at the beginning of right. the show. It's a Star Trek parody. Right. It's called Space Fleet. Yeah. Instead of Starfleet. Um, yeah, this was great. I really liked this one. I almost didn't show this one to you. Because <laughs> I'm just like, well, she doesn't like Star Trek. I didn't really like that much. It's always a mistake. Always a mistake if you don't show it to me. <laughs> uh no no it's not that is that is 100 percent not true um okay maybe you're you're right but okay so yeah like i just i was just when we were doing the top 10 i was just like yeah we'll see if i show it to her or not and and then just like this this little inkling kept pushing me and saying like no 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 show it show it show it, show it. Mm-hmm. and and you agreed and i totally saw it in completely different train uh, like uh, in, in different light because i went from a three star review to a four star review, and that's a big change. That is, yeah, absolutely. I I just think it's such like a complete story, and the special effects were fantastic. Special effects were amazing. Yeah, I mean they did a really great job, and I just think that the overall story, like beginning, middle, and end, it was like a very satisfying episode. Very satisfying because you had the future tech, which Black Mirror is known for, but more than that, it was great story and acting and just just a fascinating concept yeah so i i loved this um so like the story yeah, of, the story of uss <laughs> callister is so you have this guy uh played by jesse plemons who is a cto of a tech company and in any normal situation a cto the chief technology right uh officer at a tech company would be the, the big guy. Dog. He's right. the top dog next to the CEO. Right. Like sometimes the CEO and the CTO run the company together. Exactly. And technically that's how it was in this situation. Technically. But the thing is he was not respected. He was seen as a nerd, awkward. No one – like yeah. people only saw the CEO as the boss, not the CTO. And so he was very – he was kind of the nerd. He was losing his hair. No one looked at the I think more eye. socially awkward. Socially than awkward. Than nerdy. Like yeah. more yes. like You're not right. really – not very sociable, yeah. kind of kept to himself. But the company specialized in something called Infinity. Is that? Oh no, no, no. The the company was called Callister, and they had a virtual reality game called Infinity. Right. And uh, it was it's like virtuality to the max. I mean, right. we're talking perfect virtual reality. Right. Like you, you feel it. Like and... you plug in. Like you you put a little device on your temple, and then boom, you are there. You are in this right. world. Right. And one thing, just for a second, um, that's so cool about Black Mirror is it's all the same technology, it looks like, throughout the episodes. Or like generations. Like generations. So like it may be early tech of a previous episode or whatever, but it's like you're seeing it all in the same universe. So mm-hmm. all the same things are like possible. So even though it's, you know, like standalone episodes like a um, uh, Twilight Zone Mm-hmm. it's all kind of in the same universe. And every once in a while, you'll catch references to other episodes. Right, Visually right. or otherwise. Exactly. And it's it's very interesting. And and so with the story, um, Je- I can't, Daly, his name is Daly, uh, he is obsessed with an old sci-fi show called Space Fleet. Which is, which is very a, reminiscent of Star Trek. Very, of the original, original Star, Trek, yeah. Star Trek. And so he made a modification to the game which is a sci-fi game, but made it look like Space Fleet. And so he goes and visits it and plays it at home all the time. Well, I guess we can't really say anything yeah, more than that. Yeah, right. Um, but it, it gets crazy. It gets crazy. It gets creepy. Right. It gets, it gets weird in Black Mirror fashion. And it's probably the funniest oh, yeah, it's hilarious. episode of Black Mirror we've seen. Oh, yeah. And probably the best acted. It was great. I loved it. Like, there were so many great, like, okay, so, like, the, uh, um, I cannot remember, Jimmy Simpson, the guy from Westworld and House oh, yeah. of Cards, yeah. he's in it. He does a fantastic job. Yeah. The mom from How I Met Your Mother. Right. Like, the mother from <laughs> the, How I Met Your mom. Mother <laughs> is, is, is in this. Right. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's great. It's like, if you got, if you watched it and didn't, if you're a sci-fi fan, you watched it and didn't like it, try it again. Yeah, I think you, like, I, I was telling you after you watched it the second time and you were like, oh, I like that so much more now. I think you also have to see it in the Black Mirror universe, like, as an episode of Black Mirror. I think that that also helps because when you see it, if you're just seeing it as, like, oh, they're ripping off Star Trek, that, <laughs> well, you know, or, like, this is their Star Trek episode, I think you're yeah. going to be too critical, right? Like, if you're seeing it as, like, a Star Trek replacement or, like, 
even in like the even paying tribute to Star Trek, I think you just have to see it as like Black Mirror episode. I never really thought of it as like ripping off Star I Trek. I know, but like people told you to watch it because you like Star Trek. Yes. So what is that saying? You're right. You're right. I was just like, uh, it was the I was in the wrong frame of mind, and yeah. it was great. It was great. It yeah. was great. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Sure. Uh, do 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 do. So the next one after that, number seven is "Shut Up and Dance." I think this was possibly both of our favorites. Yes. So, but for no, I don't know if it's my favorite anymore. Well, when we're still watching, so yeah, yeah. But "Shut Up and Dance." This is the one that we were talking about earlier that could take place today, in right. the future, even, right? Even a couple of years ago, even ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, but like it's it is definitely so, today it could happen. It is very much today. There's really no future tech in it. No, there is no futuristic stuff at all in it. It's just a yeah. It's just a Black Mirror episode about technology, right? And it's so this kid, uh, this teenager, um, looks at some pornography on his laptop and does what you think I'm talking about, and he gets his computer is hacked and he gets recorded doing it right and so somebody texts him and says hey i have this video and you're gonna do what i say or i'm gonna release this video to your friends and family right and so he's he's on this wild goose chase he's having a panic attack he's sweating right and yeah and he's sent and supposed to deliver packages and do meet people. Meet people and a lot of people who are in the same situation that he is in where yeah. like there's, you know, like a guy who's had an affair or going to have an affair. And there's like, a guy who's delivering a cake and he right. says, what do I do next? He's like, I don't know. I'm in the same boat as you. Right. Exactly. So I think so. The, the reason why we both like this episode, I think, is just because of the pacing of it was fantastic. Like the whole time you're on the edge of your seat of like yes. what's going to happen and you're rooting for them against the them, right? The people who are doing this to them. You ri- you're, yeah, you're rooting for the yeah. protagonists against the people who are doing this to them. Right. And the twist is at the end, which we're not going to spoil, where you're like, okay. <laughs> um, but it's it's just a very interesting – I think the, the main thing is the pacing in the story itself was very fascinating of – you know, like the tasks that he had to do and also like the urgency, I think was the fun part about this episode. Yeah, yes, the urgency because they kept having this timeline where they're just like, be there in 88 minutes or we're leaking. Right. Be there in an hour or we're leaking. We can see your GPS. You're going the wrong way. Like you got to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's going to happen. Yeah. And like the th- and some things were really simple that they have them do and other things are very complex. Right. Or very detrimental right and you're just like oh my god what is he gonna do right. is he gonna do it right or like at certain points you're just like dude just let it leak just you know, right, like, right. <laughs> like it's nothing's worth that yeah i think this was probably the least black mirror episode probably of black mirror and yeah it's our favorite what does that say i know, you know? i know but i yeah, but I think that the thing that we liked about it was definitely the pacing. Yes, the pacing was mm-hmm. was fantastic. This was hardcore story based. This right. was not concept based. Right. Or not extreme concept based. Because I like other episodes way more for their concept, but I can acknowledge the fact that the story wasn't fantastic. Right. Yeah. Uh so the next one after that is this one is a really horrible one to watch as a couple. <laughs> I know which way. <laughs> because it, you have like you have to have these conversations where you're just like oh, you can't God. help it, right? Yeah. This one is called the entire history of you. Yeah, that's number so, six. So in Black Mirror Universe, uh, in this episode, everyone, not everyone, but most people, most, most everyone has a what they call a grain, which is like basically a recorder at all times that records your every interaction that they implant at birth, right? Because like there was basic, a baby. Right. Below, below, like, you know, underneath your, like, underneath your ear. Your lobe, yeah. Your earlobe, yeah. yeah. And you have, like, a device that you can rewind anything. So, for example. An airplay. An, air, the, an airplay. Yeah, you can airplay. To Chromecast. The, exactly. So, you know, this lends itself to you have an argument with your spouse and you're like, no, you said this. Rewind. Rewind. Put it up on the screen. Or your boss said something. What do you think of what he meant by that? Put it up on the screen. Okay, now your thoughts. So, like, 
after this episode. So the story, we were kind of like, eh. But the idea of that is just so crazy. And the idea of like, okay, as a couple, because that's what it dealt with was a couple – you know, in basically dealing with this technology. Well, like I think we can <laughs> I, we can give away a little bit of the story because the concept okay. is is that like this guy thinks his wife is cheating on him, right? Right. And he be- he becomes obsessed with it, right? And so that's how it plays. So he keeps yeah. playing back different interactions that he thinks are clues that she is cheating. Yeah. And uh, and also like you know, so you have to think about it's basically a database of everything, so you can go back and watch like. 10 years ago stuff that happened to you. So and you can like search and organize and say, right. like, so I can say like, okay, give me the last, you know, like 10 days with all my interactions with the girl. And then right. boom, it comes up. And, you know, or like, can you show me the girl 10 years ago? So like that whole idea is just fascinating. And just the idea of like how many fights could happen because of the fact that you can go back in time and literally say this is what you said or this is what you did. Mm -hmm. And like there's a certain point where like the spouse is like, no, I want you to show me what happened. Yeah. And don't just tell me what happened. Show me what happened. Yeah. So and she can or she doesn't, you know, that idea is just crazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So. So, um, we didn't really like the the story so much in this one. It was a, just because it was just kind of it really just dealt with the tech more. It was a one trick pony, right? One thing over and over again. But I thought the acting was fantastic in the, it. The protagonist was is the same guy who plays Koba yeah. in the new Planet of the and Apes. The, the wife was the new Doctor. Yeah, Jodie Forrester Whitaker. Forrester Forrest Whitaker. For- <laughs> Jodie Forrest Whitaker um, is <laughs> one of the other protagonists. Um, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, and I think that the 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 acting was fantastic, and I think that just the idea of like how people would react in that mm-hmm. scenario was just fascinating. It was a, definitely like it a really character was. study and how people would actually deal. Yeah, and yeah, and it's just there's as a ma- you see it mainly from the man's perspective. Yeah. And as a man, as a married man, I take a look at him and sadly see bits of myself. Mm. And I'm just like, uh, well, not the jealousy. I am not a jealous no, person. No, you're not. In the least. <laughs> um, but there are certain ways that he argues. And mm. I, I look at that technology and I'm like, I would abuse. You would totally use that technology. I would abuse that yeah. technology with you. Because when we fight, sometimes they'll go, uh, excuse me, no. You verbatim said blank, 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 blank. Right, right. And you're like, I never said that. And I was like, yes, you did. And you totally would airplay it if you could. I, oh, my gosh. If I could, <laughs> I would, yes, I would say like, no, check the transcript. Right. Boom, in right, your face. Right, right. And there's a, there's a point in it that made me laugh out loud because she like tries to quickly scrub through something and like delete it before she puts it on the airplay mm-hmm. and i'm like you totally would do that you totally would like <laughs> try to you would try to delete it as fast as you could so that you wouldn't show it like yeah here it is delete delete delete. <laughs> yeah, as you can see it's not here oh god <laughs> yeah so that was the interesting thing about this episode yes like the technology was more interesting than the story mm-hmm. but the story was a good vehicle yeah for the technology and great acting great acting but it was really just it was a little bit of a stretch, yeah. Okay. This one, this one, when I watched it, I felt like, oh, that's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I okay. Was, I was just, after, is this the B one? This is the B one. This one's called Hated in the Nation. Number five, Hated in the Nation. Um, it's, it's the, okay, we're not giving it away, anything away by calling it the B one because in all the advertising, like the trailer for it and the, even the artwork, it's the focus on the bees. Which is ridiculous because that's kind of the the first act twist is that the bees are involved. Like it's all about autonomous bees. Like all the bees, all the bees died out. Right. And so some company developed autonomous bees, like these robotic autonomous bees in order to pollinate flowers. Because if we don't have right. bees, we don't have flowers. If we don't have flowers, then we don't have an earth. Right. And 
like in the like the first couple of shots, like you see a newscaster saying, "And the autonomous bees are doing this, this, and this," and then they move on. Like somebody's right. list, watching a news program and they shoot it, and we see some bees, and then we don't hear about the bees for like the next thirty minutes. And if you apply Chekhov's gun to right. the principal, I was gonna say, you're yeah. just like, well, of the course, bees have to have something to do with it, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't have shown us the friggin' bees, right? Right. And um, so. What was I saying? <laughs> I just well, said bees so a lot. You, but I think a lot of these episodes, if you were to go back and watch them, you know, having already watched them, you're like, oh, that's more obvious. Yeah. You know, this was a 90 minute episode. Yeah. And it felt a lot like a movie. It felt like a, a I, I don't say this as a as an insult, but it felt like a cheap movie. I felt like it felt long to me. I don't think it felt long to you. No. But I thought like, so... They're the main thing here is about like hashtags and the power of hashtags and the power of like basically not just hashtags but like the power of uh, criticizing someone you've never met. Yeah, like um, right, the internet outrage. Right, I think is what it was focused right. on. Internet outrage. You know, and everyone getting on the bandwagon and you know, like saying you know, somebody should die. Someone should die because of what they did or what they, they were said a jerk to a nine year old. Ex- exactly. So, um, and like the power of that and like you know these these beings you know basically like listening to to that that information yeah. so without giving too much away um it's just i think that what really resonated with me was um the idea of how many people are so quick to say i hate that person without even knowing them yeah like they should get cancer they should die in a fire right right I hope and their kids die and how that is like okay to say Mm -hmm. and so i think that that was definitely the moral warning of this is you know there are consequences for even doing that so even whatever that person did there's consequences for saying something so heinous about them even if even if they're in the wrong Mm -hmm. does it make you right for saying well they should die yeah it was really great how they i thought the concept was great on how it juggled these concepts and going from one concept to the next. Cause I felt like with this one, you could argue, well, it didn't pick a direct, it, it, it picked too many directions. It should have stuck with one. I think it juggled it quite, quite nicely. And they did it through the framework of a murder investigation. Right. And which you and I don't know, like we don't like cop procedurals. Right. But this was different. But this was different. Yeah. And this was an investigation. This was a this was a mystery. This because we do like those. We do like mysteries. We do like murder mysteries, and we like serial killers and everything like that. Stories about serial killers. Let me say that. Um, <laughs> and and so with this one, it was interesting to have some tech thrown in. But I mean, it wasn't heavy on the tech. No, it wasn't. It was really just like it was. It was kind of like it's like somebody popped in and said like, okay. Just imagine a world where autonomous bees exist. Continue. Exactly. And that was it. Yeah, that exactly. Was it. Exactly. And so it's just like cell phones are the same. Twitter's the same. Internet's the same. People right. are the same. Just autonomous bees exist. Right. Right. So I think that that was the grounding in reality that basically everything was the same except for that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what was appealing to me about this episode. But to me, it felt a little long. Yeah, I loved it. I okay. thought it was great. And at that time, I was just like, "This is the best one." Okay. Except, uh, like, then I watched. Then we watched Callister again, and I was just like, mm, "I don't know." <laughs> Not so sure. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the one after that, this one, this one, everybody loves. This one, everybody oh, I know. talks about. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I always say it wrong. Um, this is episode four, San Junipero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the one. Uh, Again, we can't give too much away. Yeah, it's kind of hard. So two women meet in a club. One's a redhead, one uh, one's a white redhead, and one's an African American woman. Mm-hmm. And um, they meet in a club, and one is much more experienced in the in the realms of of same sex relationships than the other. Mm-hmm. And it's, so it's kind of that story, and it takes place in the eighties, right? And it's um, I can't. I feel like I was going to say, I don't it. know. Yeah, it's kind of hard because it, it feels like it kind of. Because if we talk about the concept, I want to talk about the concept, though. We can, we talk to... about, can we talk about a little bit? 
I'm, okay, so here we go, guys. I, I'm sorry. We're going to have to spoil this one. If you haven't... Because how do you talk about it without there, it? There's no way for us to talk about it without talking about the concept. So we are going and to... And the description is vague in this one. So, are, like, Actually, let's come back to this one. Okay. Let's that do that. That sounds good. We're going to come back to that so one. So we don't spoil anything. San Junipero. Because so, we only have one other episode to talk about. Oh, okay. So we're go- we're going to talk about San Junipero last so that we can get into a spoil zone. So, okay, so now we're going to talk about episode three, Black Museum. This is the one we watched this morning. Yeah, we did. And so... We uh, really liked this one. This one was great. It was. I think the style of the episode of um, telling basically three different stories, basically of this kind of Ripley's Believe It or Not type museum. But um, with murder and But with murder, yeah, exactly. Of these, you know past tech from you know tech company this one tech company this guy had worked for basically had a collection of all these different things he had kind of sold Mm -hmm. um throughout time and how they had gone awry right like kind of the cautionary tales of each one yeah there was there's three tales Mm -hmm. i love the framing i I think that was really fantastic was like the fact that we heard three different stories within one episode and like letitia wright yeah was shuri Shuri from Black Panther. <laughs> she wasn't in this. So. <laughs> she was the frame. She was device. not Shuri. Yeah, that'd <laughs> be weird. <laughs> that would be weird if she was Shuri. Um, <laughs> she was visiting, like she was, she needed to get gas. Mm-hmm. And so, or charge her car, I should say. Right. And she goes in this museum. And, like, it looks like happenstance. Just like, it's called Black Museum. She shows up and there's this guy who's kind of nice, a little weird, but nice. And like shows her around and goes from location to location within the museum saying, I know everything about here. We see a reference to USS Callister. Right. Which um, is fun. We see some other equipment and um, she. Oh, yeah. He goes through and tells about. He goes through and like thing. the first tale is about a doctor who gets an implant so that he can feel what his patients are feeling so that he can better diagnose great concept yeah because there's so many times there's so many times like i will ask you like oh baby you're not feeling well no i'm not feeling well what are you feeling i just feel bad (laughs) i'm like where does it hurt all over just be specific you know and and so as a doctor that has to be that kind of thing has to be maddening or if you're talking to someone who doesn't speak english or is older unconscious or a young person like a kid right right you know like you don't know what's going on right and so he feels it and and helps save lives. Helps save lives and diagnose, but then he gets addicted to it. Yeah. And things go crazy. Right. And that's such a good concept. Right, exactly. Where the technology kind of, you know, it's too much now. This one was gory. Yeah. It was a Super little too sexual, gory. Yeah. And too really gory. gory. Yeah. It felt like it felt like kind of torture porn. Like it was, it was kind of like I don't a. Know if that was well, no, March. that's not that's not the wrong term. That, that's the that's the absolute wrong term. I shouldn't have said that. What it felt like is the level of gore and sex that you would find in a cheap horror film is what I meant to say. I don't even know if I. Am go I that overstating far. I think, that? I think you're going too far with that. Okay. Like I just think it was maybe surprising for Black Mirror. Okay, I guess I was just taken off guard by yeah. how much sex and how much. I don't think it was that crazy. gore was in it. Yeah. But I kept. Like, and you saw it coming, so I, I appreciate that you, too. You did see it coming, and the beauty of us having an Apple TV is that you can do that skip 10, 15 second thing right. real quick so you can get past stuff. Right. Um, but I was I was taken aback. Yeah. I guess I'm overstating. <laughs> the next one was um, the next thing he was talking about was a really interesting concept of, um, you know, a couple meets and they have a child together, and then the wife gets hit by a truck. But and she's in a comatose state where she'll she's not going to wake up, mm-hmm. and you know he comes. This guy comes with this future tech, and he's like, "Hey, she could actually live in your head." Yeah, we could transfer we her could consciousness. Transfer her consciousness. Like you don't need all of your brain. You can we can put her, her part of her brain in your brain, and then you can actually have a conversation. She can actually feel and taste and touch the same things she experiences the world through your your eyes and you know how you feel and um this one was actually hilarious but also in like a sad way tragically tragically hilarious hilarious. like definitely black humor going on here where um you know it's great at first where you know she can see her son and then time goes on and 
the the husband's starting to move on, the partner's starting to move on, and they're not getting they're along. They're not getting along. It kind of becomes a situation where they probably should have gotten a divorce. <laughs> um, and like they kind of go to like weekends only. She's only and they create like a pause button. She can only like, go in like weekends only. Yeah, and so yeah. it just gets crazier from and there. Crazier and there. And crazier. And so just the whole idea of like your spouse living in your head, like. Oh, good Lord. I don't know if any relationship could stand that. <laughs> I know. like, And that's the thing. It's like, that's why I really like the relationship ones because it makes you ask those questions. Right. And I love you to death. I love you too, but you can't live in my head. I Yeah, exactly. I love you, but no. And that's the thing. Is it's like people are always kind of shocked or not shocked, but like surprised at how much we're into each other. Like I want to spend 100% of my time with you. Yeah. Like our dream job is working together, no matter what it is. It's being yeah, together. Yeah, it would be fantastic. But. We're best friends. But. But. I'm still my own person, and yeah. you are too. And, you know, I I need my own thoughts. I think it would be interesting as an experiment. Like. For, like for a day? For like a day. <laughs> and then it would be like, okay. And then like, oh, okay, get out of my head. <laughs> yeah. Like, go away. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. It's just like we were not built that way no we were not built to no. live that way for either person yeah but it's kind of hilarious because it, it also kind of reminds you of how things fade too or like you know in that situ- situation like they probably they may have made it if they both were yeah. able to be together they could have been the perfect couple exactly but like in this situation it was just kind of funny how like things got progressively like okay, you're fine living. Now you're so okay with the pause button. And then it gets further and further down where it's like, okay, what else can we do to have her around but not really? Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of fascinating. It's a great conversation yeah. piece. And it, it's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then the third one, the third one, like we go from like horror to kind of black humor or dark comedy to drama. Yeah. Like, and it's where um, a man on death row signs away his digital rights mm-hmm. and agrees to have his consciousness uploaded right to um to like to this guy i don't want to give too much away right um but it becomes basically this guy even though he's dead his consciousness is trapped in a virtual jail cell right and he gets tortured every day multiple times for the rest of his digital life right and like the guy who does it is profiting is profiting off of it and makes him an attraction and you're just like the moral and ethical ramifications of it and it's like regardless of whether or not he was actually guilty of the crime which that is in question right even if he was guilty you're just like this is still not okay this is inhumane this is disgusting we're not animals right why are we doing this to him and why is this legal right and it just is horrifying but you could see it happening yeah seriously and yeah there's not much more i can really yeah. give, say to that would i think it's all it always brings me back to like gladiator days right like oh yeah when you know you think about like oh humans couldn't do that like when you see stuff like that and you're like oh you know you see this future concept of like mm-hmm. torture you're like oh humans couldn't do that but then you think back and you're like no we've been, we, doing, it we've been doing it for a long time and been okay with it so you know, you may think personally, like, oh, I couldn't do that. But society as a whole, yeah, yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that was just interesting about that one. But also the framing device was really good with this one with as well. With the museum. Yes, the with museum Letitia was Wright really and the good. the curator, mm-hmm. like, doing it together. Yeah, that was really great. I think this is probably Maybe. my favorite. It was really good. Maybe between this and Callister. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard because it's I have so a top hard. three. I have, like, a... The one with Shut Up and Dance, Shut Up and Dance, Callister, and Black Museum are all very kind of tied. With we me. actually all agreed that, like, I think that those have the best, like, complete story, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, in Black Museum has more, like, it's more of t- talking about tales, right? It's kind but of they're like, all linked. They're all linked. Yeah. So it's just interesting. Yeah. What things? It's so thought provoking. All right. Well, let's go to. Um, because uh, number two and number one, number two is Hang the DJ, and number one is White Christmas. We still need to watch which those. Which we have not watched those yet. So we're excited. Uh, but number f- we're going to go back to number four, because we just saw our number three, San Junipero. So this one, if you have not seen this one, right? skip like skip ahead. This one was definitely talked about, though. Like We had yes. heard about this one 
before we started watching Black Mirror again. Yeah. So like we're so again we're going to spoil this. Mm-hmm. Do not listen if you have not seen this episode, or if you don't mind being spoiled, that's fine. Right. Um, but before you go, make sure to go to the nerdparty dot com for all of your nerd party needs. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. We're all over the place. We have backlogged of episodes. We have a Harry Potter show, two Star Wars shows, a couple of Star Trek shows, geek shows, film shows. Check it out. We got everything. You name it. We got new content coming to you every single day of the week. And if you like what we're doing here on Nerd Nuptial, consider giving us a review. Give yes, us, please. Go to Apple uh, Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's called. Give us a review. If you give us a five-star review, we'll mention you on the show. Okay, San Junipero. <laughs> um they totally don't pronounce it that way uh okay so spoiler ter- territory you've been yes. warned yeah okay so the concept is uh there's a virtual world mm-hmm. kind of like callister but right. not a game it's like a meetup place right it's like a it's a virtual reality meetup place you so can upload and hang out there yeah it's kind of like the internet right a little bit right it's only like physical physical like you can you can take a physical form there. Like you can go to... Which a, I guess, yeah. Like a club. Yeah. Like a club there is kind of like a chat room. Mm-hmm. Or like there was another place called the... Um, oh my gosh, what was it called? There was another club that was down the road. Right, which was like crazier. With, there was like BDSM yeah. and like leather and whips and everything like that. <laughs> and it's like, you don't want to go there. Right. My mother told me not to go there. Right. That kind of thing. So yeah, so you can kind of hang out there. Um, it's like different... Like, okay, so I couldn't tell, maybe this is silly of me, but, like, you could travel and it could be, like, different decades, too. You could, yeah. You right? Could you could go to travel. the same place. Okay. So, like, the, um, what was the name of that club? Jackson's or Tucker's? Tucker's. Tucker's. The name of the club is Tucker's. You could see what Tucker's looked like in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. Right. You could choose whatever era you wanted to. Right. Uh, but it was in the same physical space. Right. And they did a really cool job of showing it in different areas. Like, like there was a a, a scream poster on the wall, right. or a born identity poster on the wall, showing different um, eras, or like a Back to the Future on the. It wasn't Back to the Future, but it was like another eighties movie or something right, like that. Right, right, right. And uh, the music, of course, was different. The clothes were different, mm-hmm. but it was really interesting because the the first time we see it, you and I made the crack where we're like, the eight, this is two eighties for the eighties. It's like what we would think of as 80s. It's what like kids yeah. would think is what the 80s look right, like right. today. <laughs> exactly. And there's a reason. It's because it was fake. Right. Exactly. Which worked, right? It absolutely it worked. It absolutely worked. Yeah. So, you know, in this in this world, you can, you know, do whatever you want within this kind of resort town. Yeah. Right? Like this is where you're hanging out. And um, basically at midnight, then it's kind of like the Cinderella thing where like for specific for people, specific people, they're kind of like done. They like, have you to only, exit. Yeah. You only get like some people you had a five hour limit every week because right. you had like a free trial package. Right. Right. Or if you had the unlimited <laughs> package, if you paid more, you could be you could live there full time. Exactly. Um, so like you saw a lot of people who either in nursing homes mm-hmm. or dead right because you could quote unquote pass on there where you right. could upload your consciousness to the cloud and live there full time as a young person and it wasn't like a it wasn't like a euthanasia type thing it was well i guess some people did see, it, people that did way, see it that way where like you you know um some people like their families wouldn't agree to let them like upload because they didn't like see someone it who's as, in a coma yeah they were religious and stuff like that so whereas other people were like no this is totally fine you know i visit here all the time and now i'm just gonna be here permanently um so that idea was fascinating and the story could, was not revealed right away no it was like this not. concept was not revealed. No. like it was just two women in the 80s who right. met at a club, fell in love, had sex. Right. And like one was more experienced than the other. One kept saying that she was engaged to a guy named Greg, couldn't do it. Right. Like it didn't want to go through with this, couldn't have a relationship. Other one was having a hard time committing. Right. she was saying, she's like, I'm just here to have a good time. Right. And, uh, and so as the story moved on, it started getting weirder and they started making references that you didn't quite understand. Right. And then they started jumping eras and you're like, Okay, okay, hold what's on. What's going on? <laughs> right. How are they jumping eras? Are they time traveling? Is it virtual reality? Right. Is it another dimension? You mm-hmm. know, like, what is going on? What's Black Mirror telling us? Right. Exactly. How, what's the twist? Mm-hmm. 
And the twist was is that it was like it was a virtual reality that you could log into. Like, and they started talking to each other where they're just like, "Where are you?" Like, "Oh, I'm in, I'm in San Diego." It's like, "Oh, I'm in Boulder," you know, like right, and like right, that. but right. we're right next to each other and just had sex, you know, like right, exactly. So, which is you know, same idea as being on the internet where you're you know far away from each other but you're talking immediately Mm -hmm. um only this is like you're actually physically there like this is the dream of people who have online communities like to be able to meet up in a digital space that feels like a physical space and hang out and hang out i would sign up for that immediately i would love that i wouldn't at all 100 percent. i would sign up for that 100 i would do it today if i could oh gosh no because i have a close friend in Washington D.C. I have a close friend in Orlando, Florida. I have a close. You have a close friend in Texas. You're right. I have another friend I in Los it? Angeles. I'm trying to figure out whether I do it. And if we could all meet up the at the same time. The creep factor, though, for me. Mm, the creep uh, factor. What do you mean? Just the idea of like I'm here, you're there. I don't know. Like I don't know if I would do it. It would all depend on how you use it. Mm-hmm. Like if you use it to cruise, and like have crazy, you know, like crazy intimate encounters with no ramifications then like if you want to ruin your marriage right. or if you want to like hurt somebody's feelings from far away you know like or if yeah. you like or if you want to do it just to hurt people or you know like it's just like today yeah yeah i guess you're right you just accept you're yeah. in person except not in person that's crazy i don't know that but it is it's fascinating mm-hmm. because you have to ask yourself like okay and and also there's the concept of like okay if you're going to die anyway, do you pass on into this place where do you, you just upload your consciousness you to the cloud? Yeah, you just you know be there forever, or do you just kind of go natural and die? So that was also interesting. And also there's that idea of, well, I mean, if you're uploading your consciousness, are you really uploading your consciousness or are you copying your consciousness? Right. Because and they deal with that in other episodes. They deal with that in other episodes. <laughs> yeah. It's just like if you're copying your consciousness. Well, like if you believe in a soul, like we do, mm-hmm. and if you believe in God, then your soul would ascend, but some version of yourself is it's existing still, still on a computer. Yeah. So is it a version of yourself or is it yourself? Right. And that's an that is a and would uh, you know? And that is a philosophical question. Right. Because you're like if it is a copy, then your soul wouldn't know and you'd exist in heaven or hell or purgatory or whatever you believe in mm-hmm. or get reincarnated. Um but your copy of yourself would be like, okay, I'm here now. Right. So right. What's it's, it's what's really you? Yeah. It's really interesting to think about. Yeah. And also because I mentioned it, you and I are believers. Mm-hmm. We're Christians. And so what are the ramifications of that? Like like as believers, could we do that? Could we not do that? Are we are we not allowing ourselves to go to the afterlife by doing that or are we just allowing a piece of ourselves to live on? Or or what it, like cuz they said in the show that like you could turn it off at any time you could remove yourself from the system so like if so you, if you could then that's a like so you could just be like okay now i'm i'm done with this place yeah yeah like what you could do is Peace like out. okay my body is dying mm-hmm. and so i want to hang out at san juniper for a little bit like give me 50 years 100 years right. in san juniper and i'm just like you know what i like to either end this existence or i'd like to see what heaven's like see if that's a thing you know and then turn yourself off and go either you get eternal darkness right which you wouldn't care anyway because you're done right or you get to uh have a meet up with einstein and jesus okay i don't know why einstein <laughs> popped in there i couldn't think of another historical figure i completely blanked on a historical figure i could have said george washington Mother Teresa. nope <laughs> Einstein and Jesus. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It, and I think that that's the fascinating thing about the show is that you it lends itself to so many questions of, okay, we, you know, some of this technology is not that crazy. So, you know, would you do it? Mm-hmm. Would you put a grain in your head? Would you, you know. Be, would you put an empathy chip in yeah, your head? Yeah. What, what would you do? Like, would you upload? Would you go and visit? Like, what would you do? And so I think that that's just so interesting. It's also so cautionary of like the issues that could come from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when also think about the benefits though, like they even showed us in the show, yeah. like she was a coma victim or not even necessarily a coma victim, but like a paraplegic. Yeah. She could not move. She could not speak. Right. She could not breathe on her own. 
She right. did not, you know, none of those things. The only way that she truly existed was in this world. Right. And what about people who are housebound? Right. You know, or are just having horrible accidents or right. just like the possibilities for them or people who are the elderly and their, their bodies just don't work anymore right. or they're trapped. They can right. escape. People trapped in their bodies. They could escape. Yeah. It's a, oh, it's, it's a, a beautiful lot. thing. It's a lot of, yeah. But it could also be a horrible I was thing. I say, it just, that scares me. But, it, you know, it's just, it's fascinating because you have to ask yourself. So, like, when you're watching these, these episodes, you're like, would I do it? Would I not do it? Mm-hmm. And it just lends itself to a lot of conversation, obviously, because we just spent an hour talking about I, it. We spent an hour, a full hour <laughs> talking about it. And you are always much more guarded than I am. I am. Much more I'm guarded. I'm much more like, I don't know about that. Because I'm just like, let's try it out. I know. You're you're all about future tech. And I'm like, mm, I've seen too many robots go rogue <laughs> for me to be okay with that. I've seen Terminator way That's too many right. times. I can't be okay with that. Um, but please, if you wouldn't mind emailing us or, or us tweeting, um, you know, Tristan telling him like, hey, you guys need to watch this episode because it's my mm. favorite. Um, now, keep in mind our sensibilities and yes. how I don't like certain things or whatever. But um Please let us know some of the episodes that we haven't checked out or have we checked out the best ones. And we're, tonight we're watching the last two, The White the last Christmas. Two and Hang the DJ or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Those two, which I'm excited about. Clearly, we're really into the show right I, now. Like, yeah, we. I'm <laughs> glad that we gave it another shot because we're super into it. We're yeah. super excited. We can't wait to watch more. Exactly. I love you. I know. Is Chloe? Yes. Marry me. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. I love that woman. I love her more than sharks love blood. I love you. I don't.